Hello YouTube and welcome back. Today's video is actually going to be amazing because we finally get to talk about all the misconceptions of Super Mario Bros. 3 in the speed running and just like kind of knowledge based things. We're going to do like a top 10 misconceptions and we're going to go from something that's probably frequently asked but kind of gets asked every day in my stream all the way to the things that you might not even know to ask about. So we're just gonna jump right in and start with the first one. Misconception one, we're gonna start off with an easy one and this is going to be for the wand grab in the boss room. One of the biggest misconceptions of Mario 3 is whether or not grabbing the wand at the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen is faster. It is already known that grabbing it at the bottom of the screen is faster, but I just wanna get a visual aid to show you guys what it looks like when you grab it from the top versus grabbing it from the bottom. Sometimes it's hard to understand why it's faster and why it's slower, but as you can see, Mario falls slower than the wand, so you want the wand to do the majority of the falling. So let's go ahead and compare the two. That way we can finally get a good visual representation of which one's faster and which one's slower. Misconception number two is a lot of people do ask, can early hammer help you in 100% runs? And the answer is... No, it, it cannot. If you did manage to get the Hammer Brother to come down past the sun level and past level three, sure you'd get it a little bit earlier. However, you probably would have got a couple extra movements with the Hammer Brothers, maybe a movement of four, which is bad. You don't want that at 100%. And even if you did get the early hammer and you want to get rid of the Hammer Brothers earlier, you would have to cross three, cross the sun, cross four, break it. You would kill the Hammer Brother two levels earlier, which is nice, but you'd have to scroll back and go down to five, then you would have to come down to the pyramid, and then you would get a very weird boss pattern from the pyramid going to the castle. Normally in the route, you would typically want to do three, the sun level, do the map movements down to five, back up to sun and four, then you would cross over, do the secret, and then come down to the pyramid. Optimally, that is much better with map movements. So, to answer the question, is early hammer in 100% useful at all? And the answer is no, not even close. It does not help you at at all. Misconception number three I find to be a really good one because sometimes it changes in other Mario games but for Mario 3 this one is based around the direction the mushroom goes when you hit the block. I've had a lot of people ask if the mushroom goes always away from you or always in the same direction that you're in or maybe it's the way that Mario's facing maybe he's facing left or facing right. No, the mushroom always goes the opposite direction, the side of the block that you hit it on. So a great example is if I hit the question block on the right side here, the mushroom is gonna go left. Now, if I reload my state here and I hit the block on the left side, the mushroom is gonna go right. So the power up always goes in the opposite direction of the side of the block that you hit originally. This one is very strange. One of my favorite misconceptions is the end level card and running at it with full speed always gives you a star. That is just not true. Nintendo has it set up where most end level cards are in a long stretch of ground where you can build speed, grab the card, and you always somehow grab a star. Why is that? Well, there's a good reason for that. At the end of the level, the cards spawn just like enemies. So if I go far away from it enough before spawning it, then it hasn't loaded yet. So if I get on a good runway and I build full speed, then I load the star, then I'm max running every single time I load it. As you can see, as long as I have max speed before I load the card, it should give me a star every time. Now, there are weird instances where you're like one pixel ahead of the screen, and it sometimes gives you a flower, but that's much more rare than running at it with full speed. And a great example to show you is that if I deload the card and let me come back and load the card without full speed get full speed after the card loads there you go i got a mushroom so running at full speed does not give you a star every time it just all depends on when you've loaded the card and if you have max speed by the time you've loaded it misconception number five is really cool a lot of people are led to believe that you have to grab every single coin in the white mushroom house levels to spawn the white mushroom house and again that is also not true. We are gonna use 1-4 as an example. As you can see, I'm running through, trying to grab all the coins in 1-4 to spawn the Mushroom House, to prove that it does spawn the Mushroom House. So we're gonna go ahead and grab all the coins here. We're gonna give it a little bit of a fast forward. All right, now that we grabbed all the coins in 1-4, it should spawn the White Mushroom House. It would be crazy if this didn't spawn. 
okay it did spawn perfect right the white mushroom house so now let's go ahead and give it a try where we go through one four and we don't grab all the coins let's intentionally miss one coin so much like before we're gonna do the level normally where we go through and grab all the coins but when we get to the long row of vertical coins we are actually going to skip one coin so let's go ahead and fast forward till we get to that point all right here we are and we see the vertical coins and we're gonna jump and then we skip the one coin right there just to prove that you don't actually need to get all the coins in the white mushroom house levels you just need to get a desired amount a fixed number that the creators actually put in you have to hit that fixed number or get above that fixed number to spawn the white mushroom house it has never been exactly all the coins in the level boom still appears so that is a nether misconception in mario 3. misconception number six is probably one of the most heartbreaking ones of all time everyone truly believes that when they played through this game when they were younger they got all the mushroom houses they got all the spade card games and they beat all the levels and that is just simply not true one of the biggest misconceptions is the ability to do all the mushroom houses in the entire game and unfortunately you do not have enough hammers in the game to break all the rocks to get all the mushroom houses. So let's go ahead and go through it together. World two, you grab the hammer item and you break the rock to go behind and grab the secret hammer brother, but there's also a secret mushroom house back there. Cool. We come to world three, we fight the hammer brother, we get the hammer item, we break the rock, we go on the boat, we get all those mushroom houses, cool. We get to world four and what is that right there? that is a red mushroom house behind a rock well unfortunately you do not get a hammer in world four so what are you supposed to do you're supposed to not get that mushroom house you could trade it and not use the hammer in world two or in world three and get that mushroom house but there's no way to backwards warp and there's no way to get it so the misconception is that people truly believe that they got all the mushroom houses in one full playthrough which none of us ever did Misconception 7 is based around the Hammer Brothers stages giving item power-ups. A lot of people think like, why is it so random whether you get a power-up in the Hammer Brothers stage or not? Like that that's one of the main questions I get, but it's not based around it being random. It's based on where the Hammer Brother is in the overworld with again, predetermined tiles that will give items. So let's go ahead and finish this stage here and see where the Hammer Brother goes and wherever he goes, I'll be able to tell you if you get an item or not. Okay, so if the Hammer Brother lands on the tile above me, exactly right where Mario is, this tile will always give you an item, and it is a mushroom fire flower item tile so if you're small mario it'll be a mushroom if you're big mario it'll be a fire flower this hammer brother however is a tile that just does not give items so if i grab the item and i beat the stage there is no item here none whatsoever but if we beat this level on a different frame oh my god hammer brother can you please for the love of god go left Awesome. So if the Hammer Brother lands on the tile above me, as we said before, this tile has the predetermined item in it. So if I beat the Hammer Brother, grab the item, I already know it's going to have a Fire Flower, and boom, we already get the Fire Flower item. So in World 1, this tile that I'm standing on right here will always give me an item, and this tile that I'm standing on will always give me an item. If we use the maps from the mushroomkingdom.com, we can see other worlds have predetermined spots with the Hammer Brothers. They are outlined in red you can go ahead and give it a, a quick little look it's actually pretty cool misconception 8 is actually a really silly one and i've noticed a lot of runners who are starting out with mario 3 or you know getting involved with speedrunning mario 3 don't actually know this one but it has to do with the doorway at the end when you beat bowser for some reason the misconception is that you have to press up when you go in the doorway with bowser but that is just simply not true and the reason why a lot of people get this confused is because it is the only doorway in the game that you can actually hold up to go in if you look at my input display right now you can see i am holding up right now and when it allows me to go through the doorway i will just enter the door instantly it is the only door in the game where you can hold up and go right through it so of course you wouldn't know that i remember it was actually on like my fourth or fifth year of speedrunning this game where i discovered or you know learned through the grapevine that you can just hold up going through that doorway any other door in the game you have to 
press up. So why would you hold up for this door? Who knows, but that's all you have to do. Misconception number nine is probably my favorite, and it also revolves around the Hammer Brother battle sequence in World 1, and it's based around grabbing a power-up in the Hammer Brother battle. Does it save time? Does it lose you time? How does that work? Why don't you just grab it on the airship because it's, it's already an auto-scroller. You would save time doing that. That, however, is not true. There's something weird about the chest animation in this game, and that is once you grab the chest, nothing interrupts this time right here to have the game say go back to the overworld map okay and what that means is that if i beat the hammer brother battle and grab the chest and i just you know spawn out of the battle and go back to the overworld like i'm doing right now and if we compare times with me doing that and also grabbing the power up you're gonna notice that after the chest it's the exact same amount of time so it doesn't matter how long i wait any time after i grab that chest i can grab that fire flower power up nothing interrupts that chest animation time to send you back to the overworld very cool Whoa, now hold on a second. We almost missed that one. You have to grab the power up in the Hammer Brother battle after the item stops flashing, and then you won't lose any time. Glad we got that. Misconception number 10 isn't even one that you would know to ask about. It is about the music notes, and not specifically in 6-3, but 6-3 is a great example. So normally in the speedrun, you would see us jump on the music notes and go up top over that little ice wall right here. Let me go ahead and do it perfectly so you have a good idea of what I'm talking about. So we use the music notes and we go up here, right? Normal in the speedrun, we see that all the time. What you don't know is that you need to actually use both of the music notes to get enough height. And that is the misconception right there about music notes. Apparently, using both of them gives you more height. And let me show you, if I use just one, I will not make it over the wall. One music note, nope, I did not make it over the wall. If I use one music note, nope, I cannot make it over the wall. It is the weirdest thing. I don't understand why using both of them give you enough height, but as long as you use both of them like that, you can make it over the wall. It doesn't matter if you're big Mario or small Mario, it's just one weird, dumb, random, silly music note thing. If you use one of them, you cannot make it and you die. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you really enjoyed my content, do not forget to subscribe. It helps me out so, so much. Thank you all for watching.